I'm, <clears throat> I'm Mark Davis, and I'm the uh, president of the Ohio Provider Resource Association, or OPERA. Um, I, I'm also the uh, co-chair for Advocates for our Ohio Future, Ohio's Future. Um, AOF, as we refer to it, is a broad-based health and human services coalition of over 475 uh, organizations that promotes health and human services budget and policy solutions so that all Ohioans can lead better lives. <coughs> Before we talk about the unemployment uh, bill, I want to introduce the, uh, uh, although she's introduced herself already, so there was a bit of a, a foreshadowing there, I guess, uh, uh, newest chair of, of Advocates for Ohio's Future. We're very pleased that uh, Lisa Hamler-Fugit has been elected to a two-year term uh, for a co-chair of, uh, of Ohio uh, Advocates for Ohio's Future. Uh, she has uh, agreed to serve as, uh, as co-chair following the retirement of our very dear friend, Carl Owens, uh, senior legal advisor with uh, attorney with the um, uh, Legal Aid Society of Cincinnati. So we're glad to be uh, working with Lisa in this new role, and you'll hear from her. Uh, she'll, she'll do the second half of our, of our uh, little talk here before we ask, open it up for questions. Once again, thank you for joining us today to talk about the unemployment uh, Insurance bill, it's House Bill 394. Advocates for House Future has looked closely at HB 394, and we want to share with you our concerns about the bill's proposed changes to Ohio's unemployment insurance benefit system, and secondly, some of the factors we know are impacting Ohio's workers, and, and finally, our recommendations on how to move forward to fix the state's unemployment compensation fund. We believe in investing in our state's most valuable resources, our people, to ensure that they are safe, have jobs that pay reasonable wages, that they can afford life's basics. Ohio should be a great place for all Ohioans to live and work. As we consider Ohio's Unemployment Compensation Fund and the proposed HB 394, we know that the purpose of unemployment insurance is to stabilize our economy and alleviate personal hardships that stem from involuntary job loss. Unemployment benefits are earned by employment and job loss through no fault of the worker. The State Unemployment Compensation Fund needs to be solvent in order to ensure that this critical poverty prevention tool remains intact. We support long, a long-term and balanced approach to solvency that protects all of Ohio's workers. In an economy where more working families are standing in food lines, HB 394 hurts working Ohioans and their families by severely limiting the unemployment benefits available for those who lose a job. For years, a smaller share of the unemployed in Ohio have qualified for benefits than in the nation as a whole, just 21 percent in the third quarter of 2015, and we expect that percentage to get smaller under HB 394. HB 394 goes farther than any other state to limit benefits available to the unemployed, and create barriers to accessing unemployment insurance compensation. Let me give, give you some examples from the bill. HB 394 creates a sliding scale based on employment levels under which Ohioans would receive a maximum of 12 weeks of benefits, tying Ohio with North Carolina for the smallest benefits window in the country, and that's given our current situation in Ohio. This provision discriminates against rural counties and cities with high unemployment and makes it difficult for jobless Ohioans to get the training they need for new jobs. The bill eliminates dependency classes, which provides additional support to families with children. These reductions increase the likelihood that families will fall into poverty after a job loss. HB 394 mandates that employees work during at least the three quarters of the year, in addition to the current requirement for 20 weeks. No other state has such a requirement. <clears throat> the bill requires additional waiting weeks before a worker who is laid off more than once can collect benefits. Only North Carolina has such a practice. This provision would penalize workers who accept short-term employment or find themselves laid off multiple times. The bill expands the definition of just cause for discharge to make it harder for workers to prove eligibility. The bill also disqualifies from unemployment insurance benefits, any employee who violates their employee handbook, regardless of the circumstances of the violation and without a showing of fault. No other state does that. HB 394 harms older unemployed workers and workers with disabilities 
by reducing unemployment benefits based on the amount of Social Security income workers receive. This offset was eliminated by unanimous votes in both Ohio's House and Senate in 2007. Legislators then recognized that it penalized seniors working to supplement their income. Under HB 394, jobless workers who receive Social Security disability benefits would be disqualified for unemployment insurance benefits even if they become unemployed during a trial work period. <clears throat> the earnings requirement in Ohio's current unemployment compensation system already keeps many low-wage workers from qualifying. HB 394 creates more barriers to accessing unemployment and will drive more Ohio families into poverty. We see some concerning trends affecting low-income Ohioans, and I'll now give the floor to Lisa to talk more about Ohio's working families. Thank you, Lisa.